How Starbucks Became a $100 Billion Success Story With over 33,000 locations worldwide and a brand worth more than $13 billion, Starbucks stands far above even its closest competitors. However, in 1971, when the company was founded in Seattle, Washington, fresh roasted coffee beans and espresso-based drinks were a niche specialty product with an uncertain future. So how did Starbucks become the biggest coffee chain in the world and what makes it so unique even today? Today we will explore the reasons behind Starbucks' $100 billion success story and how the company plans to stay on top in the coming years. This is Business Unlocked. We'll start at the beginning. The year is 1971 and a mug of black drip coffee costs a quarter at your local diner. You have two options for customization, cream and sugar. Espresso is a weird Italian drink you've barely heard of and none of your friends have tried it either. This is how most people across the United States experienced coffee, as an inexpensive, uninspired daily grind. However, three passionate coffee-drinking friends with little in the way of business experience or cash were about to change the world of coffee forever. Gordon Bowker, Jerry Baldwin, and Zev Siegel became friends during their college years and collaborated on several failed creative projects, such as screenplays, radio broadcasts, and documentary films. But ever determined to combine their personal passions with business, the trio met over lunch and a bad cup of coffee, which sparked conversation about how far one had to travel to find gourmet beans, and then the idea of selling coffee beans. With a $5,000 bank loan and even less in cash, Starbucks was born. The iconic mermaid logo was designed with the hope that it would act like a siren, enticing customers into the store with the allure of maritime adventure. For the first decade of its existence, Starbucks only sold roasted coffee beans, not coffee by the cup. But a crucial shift occurred when Starbucks hired Howard Schultz to be its marketing director. Schultz had his first latte at a trade show in 1983 and believed that the future of coffee was espresso-based drinks. He pushed for Starbucks to include espresso bars in their stores. However, the founders had seen limited success with espresso bars in other stores and could not be convinced. When Bowker sold his stakes in the company, Schultz leapt on the opportunity to buy in. Under his leadership, Starbucks grew exponentially in the following years and has only continued to grow even after Schultz stepped down as CEO in 2016. Altogether, it took decades for Starbucks to land on the path to success. It also saw numerous changes in leadership and direction, not all of them immediately rewarding. Because of that, its success may seem like a mystery, after all, many companies sell coffee beans and countless more sell coffee drinks. What makes Starbucks so different? The difference begins with Starbucks values and corporate culture. Every company claims to run on foundational principles, but not many are so clearly defined by the deep beliefs of its leadership figures as Starbucks, such as Howard Bihar. Bihar was the president of Starbucks for over two decades, seeing the company grow from only 28 stores to tens of thousands of locations. Even after retiring, he still visits Starbucks for a cup of coffee. And when he does, he often helps tidy up by wiping down the condiment bar or picking paper off the floor. With such a strong love for the company, one might assume that Bihar considers Starbucks to be his greatest achievement in life. That is far from the truth. Bihar believes that no workplace or job should define a person. But wait, that mentality seems rather unmotivated. How can it be one of Starbucks' strengths? You see, rather than describing Starbucks as his life's work, Bihar envisions Starbucks as merely a vehicle to express his life's work, which is his commitment to putting people and values first in business. Bihar says, we are not in the coffee business serving people. We're in the people business serving coffee. This principle is at the heart of Starbucks' service model. Starbucks decided that being in the people business meant prioritizing employees as well as customers. Staff members are referred to as partners and provided with stock options and health insurance. The company also invests in its employees' education through a tuition reimbursement program. Even during the 2008 recession, Starbucks chose to invest in its employees when other companies cut back on training in the face of dropping profits. Starbucks closed its doors for three and a half hours to provide baristas with a refresher course in espresso making. On that day, it cost the company $6 million to focus on its employees. But today, we can clearly see how the investment paid off. Starbucks has prioritized its employees as an extension of its brand and products ever since. 
New baristas are not only trained in the art of espresso, but educated on the Starbucks experience. This includes a history of the company, an overview of the coffee making process from the farmer to the roaster, and a deep understanding of Starbucks social responsibility towards its business partners, the environment and customers. A business study found that 80% of CEOs believe their companies provide a great customer experience. The same study found that only 8% of their customers agreed. This experience gap explains why Starbucks stands so far above its competitors. Because customers buy experiences, not products. When you walk into a Starbucks, everything from the music to the atmosphere to the scent is designed with the intention of creating an ideal experience. This is a large factor of Starbucks' success. When Howard Schultz bought the company from its founders in 1989, he wanted Starbucks to act as a third place, a space where people could relax or socialize that was neither work nor home. He did not see other coffee shops as his competitors. Rather, Starbucks chose to compete with places like movie theaters, malls, and club places where people go for an experience, not a product. Schultz wrote in his book titled Onward, Success is not sustainable if it is defined by how big you become. Large numbers that once captivated me, 40,000 stores, are not what matter. The only number that matters is one. One cup, one customer, one partner, one experience at a time. A vibrant, unique customer service is created through the smallest details, such as background music. The music played at Starbucks is selected by in-house music curators who know that ambiance is not only part of the brand, but also why customers come through the door time and time again. Starbucks has even integrated their playlists into their mobile app so that customers can now know what is playing and save songs for later listening. Starbucks baristas are notorious for misspelling customer names on their cups, but continuing to handwrite and call out names for order pickup is an intentional choice. Starbucks could easily automate this part of their system or not use customer names at all but providing a personalized service creates a more memorable visit. Even the aroma of coffee is treated as a selling point. For example, when Starbucks realized that the smell of its popular breakfast sandwiches interfered with the scent of coffee, they changed their sandwiches to preserve the larger customer experience. However, customer experience would mean significantly less without brand consistency extending from the menu to social media to store layouts. Starbucks ensures that a customer can walk into any one of its 30,000 stores and have the same experience they keep coming back for. Starbucks will continue to capitalize on its strengths and grow even more in the upcoming years by embracing data and AI. It uses a system called Alas to analyze the economic pros and cons of new locations based on population density, average incomes, traffic patterns, and existing stores. Its highly successful mobile app has over 25 million users and accounted for 14% of payments in 2018. The app uses AI to create a personalized user experience by remembering a user's preferred orders and creating recommendations based on weather, location, and local holidays. This mobile personalization initiative is claimed to be the biggest driver behind improved spend per customer. As a result of its corporate culture, internal focus, and unique customer experience, Starbucks dominates over half the cafe market in the United States and continues to expand worldwide, making it a truly inspirational success story. Yet despite its venti size today, its surprisingly humble origin suggests that the company's secrets to success can apply to small businesses as well. Will data and AI be enough to keep Starbucks on top? Or will these technological advances stray too far from its core strengths? Let us know in the comments what you think of the Starbucks experience.